What's going on, man? It's your boy Jay Mason checking in with the one and only Tampa Mystic at Industries Most Wanted, straight out of Tazewell, Tennessee, man. All I'm trying to do is count some motherfucking money. Let this loot give me the blues instead of bitches who don't love me, yeah. All I'm trying to do is count some motherfucking money. Keep my day ones in the loop and make sure none of mine go hungry. That's all I'm trying to do. All I'm trying to do, bitch. That's all I'm trying to do. All I'm trying to do. Hell yeah. All I'm trying to do is count. Hey, what's going on, man? It is your girl, Tampa Mystic, and we are live on the Industry's Most Wanted Industries. Podcast. Yes, hey, big Industry's wanted. Most Wanted, not the little one. I heard we got Tazwell, Tennessee, checking in. This is my brother, right. man. This is my family. We couldn't be no closer. Shout nope. out Jay Mason checking in. What's going on? Thank you. Shout out to you. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you having me. You're one of my favorites. Likewise. Definitely. Give me some love, sure. man. Of course. Boom. Shout out to Mama for being here, too. Yep. You know, Mama Mason. That's right. Definitely. Go ahead and, you know, kind of give us a brief introduction of who Jay Mason is. Jay Mason, I'm a rap artist, songwriter, entrepreneur out of Tazewell, Tennessee, man. Definitely out here getting to it. He is on Absolutely. his grind, most definitely. We got a lot to talk about, a lot to catch up on. Yep. Um, definitely. So, Jay Mason in the building. Tazewell, Tennessee. Where yep. on the map in Tennessee is that for people who are not familiar? So we're about an hour north of Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, about how long does it take you to get here to uh, the Atlanta area? About four hours, four and a half. Okay. That's not too bad. That's not nah. too bad. You were born and raised in Tazewell? I was born in Knoxville, raised in Tazewell. Okay. Yep. Take us back to little Jay Mason. You know what I'm saying? Okay. When Jay Mason was a J, you know, a little young yeah. man. What were you into? So when I was about eight is the first time I heard any type of hip-hop rap music. And it was Chameleon at Riding Dirty. <laughs> Want to catch you riding dirty. Yeah. <laughs> ever since then, I've been writing raps. My little notebooks when I was eight years old. I had a toy keyboard, making beats and shit. That's dope, man. Yeah. Was your family on board with you early on with you doing music? Mama was, but not really the rest of the family. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Listen, it takes a while because some people who are not into music don't understand why. No. But it makes you feel good. And when you're from a small town where it's not, it don't look possible. Yeah. They, they just think you're not going to make it. Like, it's not possible for you to make it out doing something like that. You're going to be stuck in a factory or a grocery store or something like that. You got bigger ambitions than that. Exactly. So, shout out to Chameleon Air. It sounds and like. Shout out to Chameleon Air. <laughs> you inspired him as yeah. a really, really you young now, but you was a super young and back then. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Definitely. For sure. When you first started writing, what were you talking about in your lyrics? I, I remember my first rap a little <laughs> bit. Like, I was rhyming eight, great, late. All the girls want to go on a date, stuff like that. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Girl to the girls, basically. Yeah. Definitely. About yeah. how old were you actually first started recording? Uh, 12 or 13. Yeah. I actually came down here to Atlanta to Haywood Studios, and we recorded a nine-song demo. Let's talk about that. What was that experience like? Was Do you think that was kind of a pivotal moment for you to say, you know what, this is what I want to be doing, being in the studio and being able to record? For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it where I, it's where I was meant to be. What was that experience like when you was in there? You said 12 or 13. Yeah. What was that like? That was great. As I was looking forward to it so much. I was a little nervous at first, but once I got in there, I got comfortable in my zone. Yeah. And I was downloading like youtube beats use the other rappers beats because <laughs> you know i didn't know at the time yeah. you got lease beats purchase them i didn't know the business side of it so i was just writing raps to other people's beats you know i think a lot of artists start out that way yeah because you don't understand the business and you're not no. supposed to at the beginning exactly it's a learning process yeah so that was at 12 or 13 when did you yeah. really transition into saying you know what i'm jay mason the rapper like i want to take this seriously about how old were you at that time i say about 16 Mm. Yeah, because I had a couple rap names at first. What were they? Do you mind sharing? <laughs> no, nah, I don't mind sharing. Uh, the first one I had was Triple J. Okay. Because I, when I was younger, like, we were talking about 8 through 12, I was in the WWE and stuff like that. Yeah. So I had Triple H, and I was trying to do Triple J. <laughs> but my three initials wasn't J, so I was like, this really don't make no sense. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to just go with my first initial and last name, and I stuck with it ever since. I love that because you kept it true to who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. You are truly Jay Mason. Exactly. Nobody can take that from you. No. And it works. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's catchy. Yeah. You can Google it and you're going to pop up. Not a million other people because no shade to some of these artists, but they come up with some names that are so common that I would imagine like an artist like Pitbull. You know how yeah. hard it was for him to be able to come up on Google search without it being a bunch of Pitbull dogs? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's a lot of work. So you definitely did that. When did you really start getting all your business together? Was it at that age of 16 or a little older? Uh, a little older. Yeah, probably around 18 after I graduated high school. Yeah. And I dropped my first project in 2016. 
got it copyrighted, all that stuff. I had my distro set up with TuneCore. Tell us about the first project you put out. What was it titled? Humble and Hungry. Humble and Hungry. Yep. Had nine songs on there. By Any Means Necessary was on there. The first lead single. Which was one of my favorites. Appreciate that. That song will go down in history. I believe that. If you guys have not heard that record, you're losing. You're mi- you're losing. You're yep. missing out. Go check out that record. It's a great record. You performed it a ton of times. Definitely. Pushed it for years. Yes. Yep. You have to. You absolutely have to. So how did that project do as a whole? It did great. We did, I want to say, close to 10K streams on Spotify. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. How did that make you feel that knowing that many people were listening to your music? It felt amazing. Like, yeah. dream come true. I mean, it might not be a big number to a lot of people, but it was big to me. I think it's a huge number for someone who is an independent artist really just kind of starting out. I think that's yeah. great. Because there's some people on Spotify, like their numbers, they'll have like 500 streams. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's, they've been doing it for years. Yeah. Definitely. So that is dope. What do you feel like Jay Mason has done to really elevate yourself? Because now like, I'm going to keep a G. Like you're one of the hardest working artists that I've had the opportunity to get to know. I always see you performing, traveling, doing stuff like this. You know, what has kind of motivated you to uplift you as Jay Mason, a rapper, to get you where you're at right now? Uh, Just trying to stay consistent and get to where I want to be. Yeah. How important is that for you to be consistent? It's top priority for me. Yeah. Because I know that's what it takes. Yeah. If you ain't got consistency, you ain't really got none. Do you feel like it's because music is your true passion? Most definitely. Because I think in order to be consistent with something, you have to really enjoy it. You gotta love it. Like going to the gym. Eat it, breathe it. Yeah. Sleep it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of people don't, they fall off from stuff because they don't enjoy it. Yeah. It's, it's what I wake up and do every day. Yeah. So music is your passion. Yeah. What is your purpose for doing been. music? A purpose? Yeah. Get, uh, get me and my mama where we deserve to be, I feel like. That's what you deserve that. And yeah. she, she, listen, she's so beautiful. Yeah. I love her. She's my family too. I really consider For you guys sure. like family. Likewise. De- definitely. And, and, and yeah. Dave and I were talking about the song that you did for your mom and one had day. her in the video. Yeah. We were talking about that this morning. Oh, really? Because one thing that, and, and I'm going to be transparent, he and I were talking about your diversity. That's, mm-hmm. that's important because yeah. as an artist, you don't want to sound the same all the time. No. Nah. And you really showed a totally different side of yourself with that. Yeah. Do you enjoy being diverse with your music? I do. I want to be able to collab from hip-hop artists to reggae, rock, country, whoever wants to collab. I, I want to be able to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you feel like at this point in your career, Jay Mason has fully found like your sound of who you want to be in the world to resonate with you? I feel like I have. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I would definitely keep growing and expanding. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we're always a work in progress. Yep. Especially like me and mama's were over there talking about as we get older, everything changes. So it's like we have to constantly be a work in progress. And keep adjusting to the circumstances. Absolutely. We have to be open to that, to change. Yep, for sure. And she, I mean, she grandmother by blood, but she mama by heart. L- listen. And, and on this music journey, she's been my road dog and my biggest supporter. <laughs> she's more like a sister to me. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? She's yeah. like, because we're fairly close in age. So she's like a sister to me. And I just say, yeah. I love you both very much. You I know, love you too. just wanted to make sure you guys knew that really, truly like family to me. I don't say that often because there's some weirdos out there. Right. But I love you guys. We We feel the same way for sure. (laughs) Definitely. So what do you feel like? Let's be transparent for a moment. Okay. What do you feel like that Jay Mason right now could work on within yourself as a music artist? Work on within myself as a music artist? Probably freestyling Mm because I'm more of a writer. Yeah. Yeah. More on the spot, like just off the dome. Yeah. I could work on that, I feel like. Yeah. That is a skill set. Yeah. Because I've been more with the pen than anything. Let's talk about that because I'm a big fan of artists who actually write. A lot of artists have gotten away from that or have never done it at all. Yeah, a lot of artists punch in like bar by bar. Absolutely. When it comes to writing for you, are you actually sitting down and putting pen to paper? I am. I love that. Every time. How long have you been writing like that since you were? Since I started when I was eight. Wow. Yeah. Do you have like notebook after notebook after notebook? (laughs) I got a backpack full of them. I love that. But you know what? That's a part of your history. It is. That is a part and of your history. And it's dope to look back on. Definitely. Let's talk about the actual creative process. And I know it can vary because it depends on the mood you're in, maybe the setting you're in. But on sure. on kind of the norm, Yeah. where do you have to be at mentally to be able to sit down and write a song? I could be calm, uh, in my feelings, 
pissed off. <laughs> I mean, it, any type of mood I can sit down and write to, as long as I got the right beat. Yes. Do you find yourself in a particular place when you actually sit down and write? Are you in your room? Are you in your car? Like, where is that that spot for you? Usually in my bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. That's your, like, your woo spot. That's my spot, yeah. because yeah, you get to be by yourself. Yeah. Clear your mind. That is all that's important. Out of all the songs that you've wrote and put out that people mm -hmm. could actually go listen to, which one is the most personal for you? Is it the song for your mom? That's definitely, like, top two, top three. Yeah. Uh, I would say intro, Nights and Days. That was the intro to my latest project, yeah. Matter of Timing. Let's talk about it. What what in particular makes that so personal for you? I, I just like I want you to be a little vulnerable for a yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just talk about having to like sleep in the car before studio sessions because we couldn't afford hotels. Yeah. Shit like that. That that's being very transparent because a lot of people will never admit to that. No. You know, the thing about life is Especially with social media, people only show us what they want us to see. Yeah, they only show the good stuff. Right. They make yeah. it look like it's all glitz and glamour, and it's not. No, they want to show where they struggled at. Absolutely, because I've honestly had times where I've drove to Florida and coming back, rather than getting a hotel, I pulled it at a ref stop and slept in my car. Absolutely. Because the budget wasn't there to get me yeah. a $150 hotel, just keeping a G. Yeah. That was gas sure. in my car. We've been there plenty of times. Yeah, Sleeping man. Sleeping in gas station parking lots, hotel parking lots. Absolutely. Do you feel like going through that type of stuff really keeps you grounded and humble? Absolutely. Yeah. Because you don't forget those times. No, absolutely. But that also, to me, speaks volumes on your character of who you are. Like, it shows that you want this so bad that you're right. willing to put yourself in those positions to do it. One thing I see you doing a lot of, and I think this is the, one of the most important things that independent artists need to be doing, is hitting these stages and performing. There are some artists out there, they refuse to do that. I can't knock their journey because everybody's journey is different. Yeah. How important is it for you, for the, where the direction that Jay Mason is wanting to go, to get out there and, man, rock these stages? That's my favorite part about the music, <laughs> hitting the stage. I enjoy that more than writing, that more than recording. Yeah. Going on stage, my favorite, my favorite part of this whole music journey. Definitely. If you had to take a wild, wild guess, how many performances would you say you've done in your career? I said over 100. A lot. Yeah. You, I would say probably yeah. more than 200. Cause Maybe. You be, you be Maybe, performing, yeah. boy. I love it. We had to log into the Be of Mind look. <laughs> <laughs> so you just recently got to perform, or you did a music video in Tampa. Yeah, I didn't get to perform, but I went out there and shot a music video for my new single, Cool With That, featuring Pretty Cocaine. Shout out to Pretty Cocaine. Man, she's so dope. Sh I, you know, honestly, I've never met her in person because I think she really kind of started moving around more once I had already moved from the city. Yeah. But I definitely connected with her because she's from the city. And right been playing her music and stuff what was the experience like working with pretty cocaine it was dope man she was real uh genuine chill vibes you know she didn't have to pull up for the video shoot but she said she was coming through so i appreciated that absolutely what was it about pretty cocaine other than her being she's beautiful and she's yeah. a fire artist what was it about her that made you decide that's the artist i want to put on this particular record pay I, her some homage i feel like she just fit the song perfectly i knew she would kill it before yeah. she even spoke on it yeah did you have like uh when you were writing the song did you already have it in mind that you wanted to put a female artist on it no not really yeah. I, I knew i left that second verse open for somebody yeah and then it just ended up being her i, yeah. was, I was like she's the one definitely do you feel like as an independent artist it's important to do some collaborations from time to time to open you up to their audience as well for sure but i feel like you should focus on building your catalog first yes absolutely how many solo songs do you have out I would say 40, about 40 songs by myself. Yeah. Because I did my first three projects before I even got a feature from anybody. Yeah. That is dope. Who was that first feature? First feature was uh, Rocky Bad out of Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> Definitely. That is fire, man. I love it. So out of all the songs that you put out there collectively, you said you have how many projects out? I got uh, 
I want to say three albums and one mixtape because on the mixtape was all industry beats and I was just going through ripping them. Yeah. Do you still do that from time to time? Do you ever rap over industry beats from time to time? I haven't in a little minute, but I want to get back to it yeah. because I used to like post freestyles in the car and shit, rapping over other people's beats. And I mean, people loved it. Yes. I'm one of those people. Appreciate I that. love that, man. I think you should get back to doing it. For sure. It ain't got to be all the time, but from time to time. Yeah. That type of stuff is what goes viral like on TikTok and stuff. Yeah. Have you really gotten into TikTok yet? I just recently got into it about a year ago. Yeah. I was avoiding it. I ain't going to lie. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be considered a TikToker, but it's just another platform that you can promote yourself. So I gave into it and started posting music videos, flyers for the shows, and single artwork and stuff like that. Absolutely. Have you ever gone live on there? I haven't gone live on that yet. Try going live because what I really like about TikTok's live is mm -hmm. anybody who's on TikTok, they don't have to be following you, can stumble across your live. Be like on the explore page or something? Like if you actually go on TikTok in the top left corner, there's a, a little button that says live. If you okay. click that, it shows you everybody that's on TikTok live okay. right now and you can just scroll through them. That's how I've stumbled across some people by right. doing that. Where Instagram doesn't do that. It only shows nah. it to your followers. Yeah. So try going live sometime on from TikTok and you're going to gain some more followers that's that way. That's dope. I didn't know it was like set up yeah, like that. definitely. I've even shopped. Listen, them people be selling so much stuff on TikTok. Y'all be getting all my money. <laughs> <laughs> on <a> TikTok shop. <laughs> TikTok shop, boy. I be, I be shopping on there. <laughs> definitely. What are some of the other things that Jay Mason is working on right now to get your name and your brand out there? We know you're performing. You're doing interviews. Is there other yep. things that you're doing? Uh, I'm setting up my online store right now. Okay. Revamping my website. Okay. Because I had my music and stuff on there and a bunch of uh, performance photos, but I ain't had no merch yeah. for sale on there. That's what I'm working on. Let's talk about that. What type of merch are you going to be presenting to the world? I'm going to have some uh, new t-shirts, joggers, hats, hopefully some slides and socks. Trying to have all the apparel. Be Yourself Empire, Team J. Mason. I love that. So it's going to be under the Be Yourself Empire. Yeah. That's dope because that is something I think everybody would wear appreciate that i think so when people come out with a merch brand you have to put yourself in the consumer shoes if this yeah. wasn't your brand would you wear it exactly you get what i'm saying i think yeah. you've done a who who everybody needs to be themselves exactly you know what i'm saying so and i love the fact that he's got socks you guys like that's that's yeah. in your mind most of these fashion merch designers forget socks. Everybody wears doggone socks. Right. You know, and yeah. the slides. Yeah. <laughs> when can we anticipate that? Uh, this summer. Okay. Yeah, it should be live this summer. That is hard. Yeah. Let's talk about Be Yourself Empire. How was that born? Where was that burst? <laughs> well, uh, fresh out of high school, I had moved to Boston and signed a little phony contract with some people. <laughs> But then uh, after that, I realized I need my own brand. I need to build it from the ground up. Yeah. And it was kind of inspired by Young Dolph, uh, Paper Route Empire. So I was like, I need to be myself because I felt like I was being forced to be someone else when I was working with the other label. Yeah. So that's where it came from. And I, I'm just building an empire off being myself. Absolutely. So you have it established like as your LLC. Yeah. It's trademark. The logo is. Man, you look, you got it all the business together. Appreciate you. A lot of y'all artists can take lessons from this guy right here. Let's dive in. And we ain't got to talk about the name of the Fugazi situation. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really want to. Yeah, we ain't yeah. got to talk about the name. But just that in general, what advice can you give to artists to look out for red flags that they don't wind up in a situation that's not good for them. Uh, make sure you uh, go have a lawyer look at the contract first yeah. before you sign anything. Definitely. Yeah. Even maybe taking it a step further and getting an entertainment attorney to go through yeah. it. You know, those things are important. Okay, so making sure they're reading through the contract. Yeah, read well, all the fine print, all of that. What would be something in there that would throw up a red flag for you right now if someone presented a contract to you? Uh, I ain't even gonna lie. Before I looked at it, I would have I was going going straight to the lawyer. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't taking no chances on that. Absolutely. Do you at this point in time in your career see yourself staying independent, or would you want a partnership with a label if it made sense? If it made sense, I would do it. Okay, definitely. Yep. Let Let's dive into that just a little bit because I'm big on manifestation, throwing stuff out there to the universe. Right. right. What would a a good scenario partnership look like for Jay Mason? What would fit you? I wouldn't want to give up any of the rights to my music. Yeah. That's the main thing. Yes. I want to contain ownership over my whole catalog. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel like some of these are, uh, labels, these so-called labels, don't allow artists to do that? Because they're greedy? 
Uh, yeah, that's a big part of it, for sure. Yeah, they want all that money. Yeah. It's about the money for a lot of people. You, and the artists be the face of it, and they pocket in all the money. Absolutely, yeah. So that's, you know, thank you for being transparent and talking about that because a lot of artists wind up in bad deals because they don't read the contract. Yep. They don't get an entertainment attorney to look over it. They're just so hungry for a situation that they'll sign their life away, and exactly. now they're stuck in a crappy situation. Yeah. You'll never do that again. <laughs> no, no, I've been there. <laughs> Absolutely. So is Be Yourself Empire, I know it's your brand, but is it also like your personal label as well? Yeah. Yeah, independent label. Do you ever have a desire to grow that where you're signing other artists once you get yourself where you want to be? I would like to, yeah. Yeah. Once I get to where I want to be. Definitely. That would be dope. Yeah. What about like producers and stuff? Would you want to sign them to your label too? For sure. Yeah, producers, uh, any uh, genre artist really. Yeah. If you dope, you dope. I, I fuck with all types of music. Especially because of the name is Be Yourself. Exactly. Be Yourself. Like as long as you're being yourself and you're authentic and you're hardworking. Right. You can be a part of the situation. Exactly. That is dope, man. What are some of the things, you know, I know you got this new record with Pretty Cocaine. Yeah, yep. shout out to her. What are some of the things that Jay Mason is working on right now, like as an artist, to really get himself out there? Uh, I got a show coming up on the 23rd of this month in uh, Columbus, Ohio. I'm what? opening up for Young Buck. What? Yep. Now that's Nashville hard. Nashville legend. That is hard. Shout out to Young Buck. Shout out to Young Buck. When are you coming to sit down, Young Buck? He told yeah, me years ago. You got to see my girl Tampa Misty. Let's, Man, get, let's make it happen. Stop playing. For real. It's funny because we he and I had a conversation years ago when I was in the studio. And he told me he was going to come through. We ain't made it happen yet. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, the show's in Columbus, Ohio. Yep. How did that situ opportunity present itself, you don't mind sharing with us? Uh, shout out Jesse Webb. He had booked me to open for Caskey a few years ago. Yeah. And he posted he had Young Buck coming to the city. So I reached out to him, you know, about a performance lot and stuff. So we made it happen. A closed mouth don't get fed. That's a fact. We in life have to shoot our shot. Yep. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you absolutely miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You sh you, sh you shot your shot. How, how do you say that? You shot your, He shot his shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you landed that. How are you yep. prepping yourself to open up for a legend like Young Buck? Same way I do any other show. It don't matter what size the stage is or the venue. I treat it the same way. I'm giving 110% on the stage. Yeah. I'm at the crib with the amp and the mic hooked up, yeah. practicing my set. How important is that? Because I feel like if I was a music artist, I would constantly be practicing. Yeah. At home, in the mirror, whatever it is. How important is it for you to do stuff like that? It's really important because I want to be prepared. Yeah. Uh, proper prep. Uh, let me spit the words out. Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, if I know I got a show coming up, I'll start practicing like two weeks ahead of time. Yeah. Like every other day, because I don't want to like strain my vocals or nothing going too crazy. Right. But yeah. So the show that you're opening up for Young Buck in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. What is the actual name of the the show? Is there like a name for it? Uh, it's actually one of his tour dates on the tour he's doing right now. That is yeah. hard. Congratulations. Thank you. I know you opened up for Caskey before. Is this yeah. the next like big artist that you've opened up for since Caskey, or was there anybody in between? Uh, they've been some, they've been a few in between. I'm opened up for uh, Montana 300. Oh, collabed with his artist Don D. We got a single out called Pain Runs Deep. Hard. Yeah, that uh, that video just hit 10k on YouTube. I'm pushing that. How do you feel that opening up for these artists like a Caskey or a Montana 300 or a Young Buck artists that are just well known out there? How do you feel like that benefits your music career? I feel like it benefits a lot, especially if you uh, go up there and on the stage and look the crowd in the eye and, you know, demand their attention. Yeah. Because if they rock with you, they're going to show you. I mean, when you get off stage, they're they going to tell you. Absolutely. And I think, like, we'll use Young Buck as an example. I think that the type of crowd that he's going to draw in yeah. will resonate with your music. Appreciate that. That's important, too. Like, you don't want to go open up for an artist that... Your sound is completely different, if that makes right. sense. Because then the crowd's going to be like, well, who's this person? Yeah. Joy is here. Hi, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Had to give my girl some love real quick. <laughs> Definitely. Um, how long is your set? Uh, 12 minutes. That's a long time. Yeah. But you've been in the gym working out. Yeah. Got, got Let me the, see them guns real up. quick. Got that wind up. Look at that. Oh, his gun bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> that type of stuff is important to get your endurance up. Yeah, for sure. Have you done a 12-minute performance before? Yeah, I've done did a few of them. 
what is it like, man, being on stage, moving around, jumping around, rapping for 12 or more minutes? It can definitely get you windy, <laughs> for sure. So you got to, uh, because I be spitting fast on some of my songs, so I, I kind of decide how much I'm going to jump around on those. That's funny because I told, I was telling David, I told you we had a whole conversation about you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because we just love you. I was telling him, that's one thing that I love about your musical styles when you, you really can rap fast. Yeah. And I love that because not every artist can do that. Was that something you kind of had to train yourself to do? Yeah. I did. <laughs> Who was I wanted it? to be able to switch the flow up, go slow, go fast, whichever way. That is so important, too. That is so important. You know, I tell artists every four bars, you should be switching your flow up a little bit. Absolutely. Was there an inspiration for you to get you to rap fast? Like, who was it? Eminem? Eminem. Twista? My biggest inspiration is Wayne. Wayne? Yeah. What's your favorite Wayne song? Because his work ethic is just crazy. What's your favorite Wayne song? Favorite Wayne song? That's hard. <laughs> uh, my first album I ever listened to by him was Carter Three. Yeah. So probably a Millie. I think Carter Three is his best album. The Carter Three, yeah. My opinion. Yeah, mine too. Yeah, definitely. So Wayne is a big inspiration for you. The biggest. The biggest. The biggest. Got him on a shirt today. That's a dope shirt too. <laughs> Hold on, let me put the camera back over to show him that shirt real quick. That's hard. I actually got it when I went and seen him, and uh, he came to Knoxville. Did me, he really? Me, me and Mama went and seen him. Mama is your ride or die. <laughs> I love sure. her. I love her. Yeah. How does it make you feel that she goes everywhere with you and you have such support from her? I love it. Yeah. Because I ain't really had that from nobody else. Yeah. The way she do it. Definitely. That's the one thing that we're going to, we learn about life as we grow. Our support system will get smaller and smaller and mm -hmm. smaller because everybody has their own stuff going on, right? Yeah. Everybody got their own life. Their own life. And to have someone... Even though she's family, she's your blood, for her to be your ride or die, that's yeah. beautiful. And she's probably what I refer to as we have to have someone that I call in my safe space. Mm -hmm. You feel comfortable and safe wherever you go because they're with you. Yeah. Do you feel like that with her? For sure. Definitely. And I feel like I can talk to her about anything, any situation I got going on. I was just talking to her about my constipation. <laughs> 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 you know, like we could talk. That's the type of person she is. Yep. Bless her heart. We love Absolutely. her. <laughs> Definitely. Um, anything else that you got coming up in the works that we need to be in tune for? Uh, cool with that video on the way. Uh, all I'm trying to do, mic drop performance on the way from Industries Most Wanted. You dig? Yes, sir. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, outside of that, you got your merch coming. Merch on, merch on the way, online store on the way. Definitely. What's keeping you motivated and pushing, man? Because it's a tough industry. It is. Uh, God, really. I mean, he wake me up in the morning. I got another day to try to achieve what I want to achieve in life. Yeah. So. Are you believe? Do you believe in like speaking, you know, positive affirmations and stuff into your life? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you have to. I do. You have to. That is so important. Definitely. Within your music, mm -hmm. do you have a signature ad lib? I don't. I don't really do ad libs too much. Really? Yeah. Okay. Understood. Yeah. But do you have like a signature saying or anything that we can find in some of your songs? Is that something you've coined yet or no? No, nah, I ain't got no uh, a signature like uh, what you want to call it. Like not ad lib, but uh. Slogan. I ain't yeah. really got that yet. We got to develop one for we gotta you. Get, that's something I need to work on right there. There you go. I'm yeah. big on that because, the, again, that's something Dave and I talk about. And, you know, like he has this little whoo that he does, like a little right. owl sound. People know that's him when they hear it, right? Yeah. I, it just like we'll say the Migos, they all will say their name before their verse comes on. There's just little things that kind of coin you or trademark yeah. you. So, yeah, that's I, something you could work on. I feel like Migos got the best ad libs out of everybody. Man, mama. You know? <laughs> yeah, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Who would be a dream collab for you? A dream collab? Besides Wayne. Yeah, besides Wayne. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Can I give you a female and a male? Of course. Okay, uh, Snow the Product. Mm. She would be the girl I want to collab with. Uh, let's see. There's so many. Montana 300. Yeah. Okay. You could yeah. make that happen because you've already connected with this artist and yep. you opened up for him. Yep. I've opened up for him three times in three different cities. What? Yep. How was it? Oh, was, you know, what was he like? You know, was he was he a vibe? He was. He was real down to earth and yeah. humble. Definitely. Let's 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 talk personal for a second. Okay. What kind of tats you got on you? Let's see. We got the, the eagle right here with the clock because time flies. I love you, that you blue in there. Appreciate that. I got uh, the lion. I'm a Leo. Okay, let me hear you roar. <laughs> <laughs> roar! I'll do it for him. <laughs> uh, you got me. <laughs> and we got the logo right here. Uh, Be Yourself Empire. Went ahead and got that tatted on me. Hold it up a little bit higher so they okay. can see it on this camera. 
That's dope, man. That's perfect. I love it. Appreciate that. And uh, got the praying hand. Says my life lies inside God's hands. Mm. And then I got Jesus himself over here. Love so. it. I love it. Do you want to get more? I do. What else you got, sure. Mine? Uh, you can't tell us I got yet. Crash Bandicoot on my leg. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, My first tap was uh, Jay Mason across my back, top of my back. It's, that's who you are. You had to yep. stamp who you are. Yeah, I got that when I was 15. I got my first one when I was 16. Okay. My first tattoo said Thug Life. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Pac. Because I was such a Pac fan. It was on my ankle. I've since had it covered up. Me okay. and my sister went and got the same tattoo because we loved us. Some, and I said, I ain't going to put it on my stomach like he did. Yeah. Back then, I almost thought about it. So I'm glad I didn't do that. Right. But uh, yeah, my first tattoo said Thug Life. You couldn't tell me I wouldn't have thug. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So you got the record. Let's talk again about what's out so people can be in tune with it. Tell us a little okay. bit again about the record with Pretty Cocaine. Uh, it's called Cool With That. We're going to drop it around July 4th. Well, the song's already out, but we're dropping the video, video on, like, July 4th. And basically, man, the song's about you ain't got to like me. I'm cool with that. Yeah. And that's the whole concept of it. Definitely. Know. What other what other most recent songs do you have out that people need to be in tune with? Uh, I got a collab with my boy MTF Ice. He's uh, from, from the same city as me, Tazwell. We got Cut Ties and a song called Keep Up. And we spit 100 bars on Keep Up with no hook. Wow. Yo, that's what I love because you, no pun intended, but you set the bar. Yeah. You do stuff that's outside the box, outside the norm, and that's what sets you apart from other people. Appreciate that. Elaborating on that a little bit more, what are some other things that sets Jay Mason apart from other artists that are out here, besides you just being so dope? Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> just being myself and not trying to sound like nobody else. Yeah. I think you've really accomplished that. If Thank a, you. If a Jay Mason record comes on, because I've known you for years now, yeah. many, many years, I know it's you, and it's not because I've known you for years. It's yeah. because you have a sound that nobody else has. Right. We've been rocking down there a decade now. A de like a decade. What's going on, yeah. And, and I'm so, I appreciate you because you've pulled up to a lot of my shows. This is not our first time sitting down doing no. interviews, man. It won't be the last. Neither. It won't be the last. We're going to keep working because I'm going to try to right. get you and mama to move out here. <laughs> I am with it. Would you ever consider relocating, not even if it's necessarily here, but outside of your city? I would. I would definitely consider moving Uh I love ATL, of course. That's yeah. been my second home since I was 12, 13. Yeah. And since I've been going to Florida, I fuck with Florida, too. Florida? Heavy. But that's, I miss that's it. That's be getting me. Nah, facts. <laughs> but if you come to ATL, you could kind of be in the middle. You could still get back home in a short amount of time, and you could still get to Florida in a short amount of time. Right. Just saying. Yeah. What is holding you in Taswell at the moment, if you don't mind sharing? Uh, ain't not really holding me. It's just close to everything. Yeah. No, I got, uh, I can go to, if I go four or five hours one way i'm in ohio or indiana yeah if i go four hours down south i'm in atlanta and it's like no matter which way i turn west east north south I, I can get to the cities i need to go for my shows it is a very centrally located area yeah did you ever get to memphis i, I did a couple shows out in memphis yeah i know it'd be a little rough out there sometimes though yeah, <laughs> for sure what's the vibe like out there when you go perform uh memphis that's cool, man. That'd be lit. Yeah. Yeah. Memphis I, always bring the energy. Okay. Yeah. That is dope. You know, there's so many dope artists out here, right? Yeah. A lot of dope artists. Let's talk about your city specifically. Okay. Pay homage to a couple of artists, because a lot of artists don't like to do this part, but I, don't, right. I know you will. Yeah. Who are a couple really dope artists beside yourself coming out of your city? Let's put a spotlight on uh, that. Shout out MTF Ice off the rip. That's my boy, man. He's like family. We got those two singles out, Cut Ties and Keep Up. And shout out my boy Dre. He be recording me. He ain't released nothing on platforms yet. Yeah. Uh, shout out Jeremy Laws, Laws Productions. Back in high school, he used to let me come over and like record at his crib after school and shit. <laughs> He'd be an engineer and mixing and mastering for me. So, yeah, shout out to them. Definitely. That's dope, man. I think it's important that we got to pay homage to other people. Just like Jay Fresh over here. He's like family to me now. We work together at Arc Studios, and it's like we right. have to show love and show gratitude to other people. Shout out to all the guys that you just named. Got, most definitely. Is there any dope female artists coming out of your city right now? Uh, not that I know of, yeah. no. What's up with the ladies, man? Come on now. Y'all got to step it up. The, so, the, now, the ladies that are out there. Salute to all of them. Lotto, Meg, yeah. you know, Gl Gl I love Glorilla. Yeah. She's one of my faves. She used to be going to the same, like, showcases as me. Like to the ring, uh, te shout out Texas Trill. She got a uh, showcase called The Ring. She started in uh, Nashville, Tennessee with it. Now she be going everywhere. Like uh, I did a Jacksonville show with her. That was my first time in Florida. I think she did one out here in uh, like Kennesaw or something. Yeah, and I pulled up. 
listen, that right there just lets you know how important it is as an independent artist to do these shows because I think that's a part of the process you can't skip. And networking's big. Yes. You don't know who's in the room until you walk up to them and say, you know, what's up? Let me get your IG or something. That's facts. So we got to get a female artist out of your city to sure. start moving and shaking. Yeah. What's the population in your city? I say like 2,000. It's a small city, for <laughs> real. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Itty bitty. Itty bitty, yeah. But you know what, though? It, some people may take that as a negative. Oh, I'm in a small. I can't make it up out of here. To me, that's a positive because yeah. it's easier for you to stand out. Yeah. Because it's you and only 1,999 other people versus right. Atlanta. There's like 6.5 million people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So at some point in time, we may catch you out here in ATO. Yep. Definitely. For sure. <laughs> I might be out here in August. Definitely. Let's let's just for a moment talk about life. What okay. is something that you live by, stand by, like, you know, maybe just that's your life, you know, thing that you do. Give us give us that for a moment. Uh prayer, for sure. That's the first thing I do when I wake up. Yeah. You know, get get on my knees beside the bed and pray to God. Thank you for another day. That's so ironic because I do the same thing every morning. Thank you, God, for another day. Exactly. Because we could not have woke up this morning. Right. It's, Many people that didn't. Absolutely. And by you doing that, that's what keeps you safe on the road when you guys are traveling. Yep. Definitely. So prayer. I, I pray right before I walked in here. I love that. Yep. I love that. That is so important. And thank you again for being transparent and sharing that because some people don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. I don't mind it. Definitely. Anything else that you got coming up or in the works before we jump in and do this performance that people need to know about? Yeah, all my projects out on all platforms, Humble and Hungry, uh, The Lit Misfit. Uh, artistically inclined and matter of time and is my latest because it's only a matter of time before this hard work pays off man for real that's facts for all the people that are loving you supporting you what do you want to say to them right now thank you from the bottom of my heart man thank you for supporting me definitely y'all need to get in tune with this guy he's fire you follow know me saying? everywhere at j mason the rapper uh my website is teamjmason.com it's not active right now but as soon as we got the store up and running It'd be back on there. Okay, so. so within the next month or two. Yeah, next month or two. About, uh, mid-summer, by the end of summer. Yeah, definitely. I know you have a lot of people that you mentioned throughout the conversation. Anybody in particular you want to give gratitude to, give thanks to, give a shout-out to? Uh, shout-out to anybody supporting me, rocking with... Uh, Rocking with what I got going on, man. Shout out to anybody supporting Tampa Mystic because she the GOAT. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. And I, I appreciate you. We have literally, like you said, been rocking for about a decade now. And yeah. It's artists like you that keep me doing what I do. Honestly. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Because there are some artists out here that I've encountered, and Jay Fresh can attest to this, that are just weirdos. Yeah. And it's days like that that I'm just like... I don't even want to do this no more because yeah. they throw my energy off. I feel that. But then I get someone like you that comes and sits down who's like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. And you're just cool to be around and says, you know what? I am doing the right thing. Thank so you. shout out to you, man. You're a blessing. You. 100%. You are too. Absolutely. My last question to you, the most important one of the whole conversation. We live. Industry. Big industry is most one and not the little one. Taswell, Tennessee checking in. That's Jay right. Mason. What makes you the industry's most wanted? Makes me the industry's most wanted. I'm the hardest out of my city. I ain't gonna lie. Facts. You definitely hardest do. working. Got the hardest flow. I'm gonna show them on this performance. All I'm trying to do is count some motherfucking money. That's what we're shooting the video <laughs> to today. <laughs> Straight like that, man. Give me some love one more time. Love. Boom. We Appreciate up out of here, y'all. Of Peace. course. My pleasure. Do is count some motherfucking money Keep my day ones in the loop And make sure none of mine go hungry That's all I'm trying to do All I'm trying to do Bitch, that's all I'm trying to do All I'm trying to do